here. Come on, lift up a good shout to the king. Yes, Lord. If you haven't heard by now, you are welcome in this place. Yes, Lord, you are welcome in this place. And you are welcome in this place. We're so glad that you're here tonight. As we do every month, Join me in this ancient prayer. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kemod Malchuto Leo all together in the English. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and forever. Amen. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Sure, it is good to praise the Lord. And as we do every month, we'll ignite the Sabbath candles. My daughter-in-law just got in from her birth nation, Guatemala, this morning about 1 a.m. or so, just in time to celebrate with us one light for creation. And he said, let there be light. And the other for the, the one who is the light of the world, Yeshua our Messiah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu v'metzvotav, v'tzivanu lehiot or legoim, v'natan lanu et Yeshua meshicheinu or haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his word, commanded us to be a light unto the nations, and who gave us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world.
Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. gather her chicks, but you were not willing. Your house will be left to you desolate, and you will not see me again until you say, until you say, let's say it together, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat for just a moment. Don't get comfortable. Last month, as you know, we, we had a drawing. We put our, our new book out. The foreword was written by our special guest this evening. And when I read the foreword that he wrote, I, I wanted him to go ahead and just finish the book, but... As you know, we, we had a drawing, we had a grand prize. And um, we'd never done anything like that before, but the grand prize, as most of you know, was two round trip tickets from anywhere and two nights stay here to come and join us for an, uh, a weekend of worship with our team and, and with our special friend, Chuck Pierce. And so last month, uh, here, right in, uh, after the service, we reached our hand into that bowl of hundreds and hundreds of names and drew one out. And uh, as the Lord does, it, it was a special thing. And so yes, she's, she's here tonight, sitting on the front, the front row. Carmen Rice, where are you? Carmen, where are you? Over on that front row. Okay, why don't you stand up and say hello. This is Carmen Rice. She's here with her sister, and they came all the way from New York. New York. I used to live in Jersey, so I can say that, New York. Well, she wrote down a little note to us, and... Um, I just wanted to share a, a little bit of it with you so you get the sense of how the Lord does things. It, it's just so cool. She, she said, my mother passed away last month on March 8th, and we buried her over my son who was murdered six and a half years ago. So it was all a very emotional experience. I'm 57 years old, and my mother was 86. We were very close. She'd been living with me for about 14 years, and I had the honor of caring for her right up to the day that she went home to be with the Lord. Since she passed, I'd found myself crying because I'd missed her. And so I'd been worshiping the Lord every night, and each night, as I did, the sorrow would lift. On March 30th, in the wee hours of the morning, as I was singing to the Lord, I had YouTube on, and I typed in worship music. 
Suddenly, I heard Paul Wilbur's song, I Enter the Holy of Holies. For the very first time, she said, I heard this song. I thought, how beautiful is that song? I switched windows and saw that it was a video. And so I started it over. To my surprise, the man in the video had my mother's eyes. I was so happy for my mother because she had entered a very holy place. I cried and cried, and so I had to find Paul Wilbur's website. As I got to the site, I thought to myself, I'd love to go to one of his concerts. Who wouldn't? <laughs> My godmother, who went home with the Lord in 2001, introduced me to his music. I loved it, and I loved the Jewish people. Well, then I saw that I could pre-order his book, and since I've never read any of his books, I told myself that I must read that book, and so I ordered two, one for myself and the other for my sister. In addition, I enrolled into the contest and pondered the thought in my heart that perhaps I could win, and if I won, I'd take my sister with me. Well, as the days passed by, I watched that video over and over at work, on my way to work, on my way back. Hopefully you weren't driving. I showed it to my husband and my daughter, and we all agreed that those were my mother's eyes. And so that video has me rejoicing ever since, and I told everyone, I knew that the Lord showed me through Paul Wilbur's video that my mother entered a very holy place. I hadn't looked into my emails for a couple of days, and I'd totally forgotten about the contest. And to my everlasting surprise, when I opened up my email and saw that I'd won the grand prize, I was shocked. Crying and crying, when I opened the link, I heard my name. It was a wonderful surprise, one of those suddenlies, as the Bible says. I'm still crying, overjoyed at winning, and more overjoyed. This was further confirmation that my mother went into a very holy place, into Jesus' presence. Well, it's true, Carmen. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so tonight, because you're here, and to honor your mom, we're going to uh, we're going to sing that, worship the Lord with that tonight.
There's no other God but you. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, He is the Lord alone. There's none before you, there's none beside you. You alone, you alone are King. Revealing yourself as our Messiah, Savior. Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, surrounding us in everywhere all the time. And you are the creator, seated on your throne of majesty. And tonight we've come to pull on your hem. <laughs> We've come to tug on your tzitzit tonight. We, we press through the, the crowd, the, the stress of the day, the, the calendar, the, the noise, the clutter. The... We even get on our knees if we need to to find our way through all the, the crowd to take a hold of the hem of your garment. To hear your voice is our food. To see your face. Mm.
Moses said it, show me your face. <laughs> Moses stood on the mountain waiting for you to pass by you placed your hand over his face in your presence he wouldn't die Kings and sunsets, and all Israel they saw your glory, and it shines in here tonight. Now you call us all in. See 
Yeshua said, if you've seen me, you've seen my Father. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us. You know, on the very last page of the book, those who hold faith to the end, they're redeemed. My Bible says their great reward is this. They get to see his face. He said to Moses, no man has ever seen my face and lived, but those who live in him. He pulls back the veil. And he says, now gaze on me. See me in all my glory. Now that's worth living for. Come on, give the Lord a good thank offering tonight. We can do better than that. Come on, give Jesus a big thank offering. Is good to praise the Lord. All right, you fanatics, go ahead and just hug somebody's neck around you and then you can have a seat for a few minutes. Now that was fun. Oh. Me too. I've been here too. No problem. Welcome tonight. Okay, uh, gals, don't go too far. Okay, there you are. Good. Um, I, I have a, a real uh, joy of leading worship with, with some really fine Folks, but tonight we, I, I have a special friend back with me. He used to travel with us full time. He was a part of the ministry for five years. And, um, and then he went on to other things. My dear friend on the keyboard tonight, Mr. Michael Holman, is here. How can you resist? The presence of the Lord is so good. So, so good. I'm kind of stuck right now. <laughs> don't even, don't even, don't even. So, um, funny thing happened to me on the way to First Friday tonight. I've got to move on from this spot where it's like thick, you know. It's 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 gonna get gooder too. We, we just arrived back from two weeks in the Philippines. We're in five cities. It's halfway around the world. There's 7,200 islands in the Philippines. In the far south, they, they have their own kind of Boko Haram radical 
Muslim groups. Um, it's a very diverse nation, but um, we, we have just a short uh, clip. Can we, can we roll that? Um, this was us a couple days ago. Yeah, that was just one of the stops. Britney Spears will be there this week, and I guarantee you. We're going to have to go back and clean it out again, but that was. You see the flags of Israel and the flags of Jerusalem and the flags of the Philippines. There is, a, there is a passion all over the world that is rising up. There has been a smoldering wick for many years. And thank God the, the fire is beginning to catch again here in the United States. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel has not left us to our own devices. He's not left us alone out here in this wilderness. And so, Wilbur Ministries, we, we are privileged to be able to travel the nations and to blow on the smoke wherever we see smoke to gather the embers and... and uh, and, and raise up a, a strong voice, but also to deposit in the people. The Lord has said to us that a declaration without a demonstration is like a cloud without rain. He said, don't just, don't just go from place to place and declare who I am, show them who I am. And so in every city, hundreds came forward to receive Yeshua, Jesus, as their Messiah and King. Lots of healings. Sometimes you could hear the sound of the enemy as he left the building. That's a sweet sound. God has, uh, has raised us up in this. Can you tell that I've lost 15 pounds? Can you tell? There's more to go. There's more to go. More of you, less of me. Because he said, align yourself. Align yourself. Body, soul, and spirit. This is something that he said to me a couple weeks ago. Align yourself. And if you'll align yourself with my plans and purposes for you, body, soul, and spirit, then I will restore all things that are necessary for you. And together we will go into this victorious future that I have already planned for you. Remember, he says, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you, says the Lord. To give you a future and a hope. Well, Paul, you know, I'm in my 50s now. Are you kidding me? You, you just know, you've just gotten to the place where you know something. Yeah. I, I plan on finishing very strong, very strong. And if you'll take those words to heart, I know the Lord will speak to each one of us 
here in this place. What that means to align. Some of us, it means to cut out certain things in our lives. Make the right choices while it's still day. Some things that needs, needs to be added. Maybe the, well, he'll, I'm not going to meddle, but he'll, Chuck's here. Maybe he'll meddle. He's the, he's a professional meddler, so that's why, that's why we have him. I'd like to give you an opportunity to sow into what you just saw. The nations are calling. They can't afford to pay for the, sorry, I keep playing with this thing because as soon as the service started, my earbuds broke. And uh, it's okay, I've got more. But it's all tangled up and it's all right. I still need it because we got one more song. So if you were planning on getting out of here just at 8.30, forget it. We have a special guest with us tonight. I know many of you are here because he's here, and we're just going to take our time. He came to us from uh, Europe and from the White House, and, and we're just we're going to give him all the time he wants. But the nations are calling. We'll be, uh, we're, we're planning right now, we'll be in Israel again in three weeks. We were there four weeks ago. We've been asked to go back to the King David Hotel for an evening of worship downtown Jerusalem in July, a day before I'm supposed to be with Jonathan Kahn in New Jersey. I'm getting to be just like you, Chuck. Here today, gone tomorrow. And um, it's okay. But you've got to be aligned, body, soul, and spirit, in order to pull it off. So take that for what it's worth. But I'd like to give you an opportunity tonight to sow, to sow into the nations and to this nation. Our partners uh, are very important to us. They send us to Ecuador and Bolivia and the Philippines, five cities, and back to Israel and back to Israel and to here and there and everywhere. And as you sow tonight, I have good news for you. Jesus is watching. He used to go to the synagogue and he'd sit by the tzedakah box because he wanted to see if those who lifted their hands and shouted hallelujah, it, it went all the way through or just because he happened to be the special guest at the service. And he'd sit there and he'd see because he knows that where our treasure is, that's where our heart will be. And tonight, as, as you sow into the lives of men and women who you'll never know on this side, but you're going you're gonna to get a, a long line of thank yous of people who will come up to you and say, thank you for sowing because you sent that guy and he shared the gospel in my little city I came to know Jesus, but you're the one who sent him. And whether you send or whether you go, I believe this is true. The reward is still the same. So if you'd like to have a piece of the pie, then I want to in invite you to sow in this offering tonight. We have several ways for you to do that. You can, you can give using the envelope. Wow, that's big enough, isn't it? And if you'll make out a check, you can make it out to Wilbur Ministries. We are now live streaming again. We have friends who come all the way from South Florida, and they're coming every month to live stream the services. So if you're watching by live stream, you can log on to paulwilbur.com or wilburministries.com, and you can sow a gift there. And your reward will be the same as well. So, Father, we thank you that you give seed to the sower. And we thank you, Lord, that you're faithful to watch over the seed and that you reproduce it. And that as it's planted with faith and you water it, that it'll produce 30, 60, and even 100-fold what's sown. And I thank you, Lord, that a generous man is providing for his own future. And Lord, tonight as we sow this seed, may you be pleased in what you see and I pray, Lord, a special blessing on the sower that you'll give back to them even more that they might be faithful on every occasion.
occasion. So, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. We recognize you as the Lord of the Sabbath, and we give you thanks and praise in Yeshua, Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, if you would come and help us, we'd appreciate it. And as you do that, we have one more song that we'd like to offer to the Lord as our friend is preparing to come. Gals, why don't you come on back and let's... The Spirit of the Lord drew the prophet to a high place, showed him a vast valley of dry bones, said to him, Son of man, can these dry bones live again?
raise up an army, raise up an army, raise up an army of worshipers. Raise up an army, raise up an army, raise up an army from the dust of the earth. Welcome tonight, a watchman on the wall, our dear friend, a voice to our generation, our dear friend, Chuck Pierce. Please come.
that point, it was total darkness. But at that point, a whole new glory realm entered into God's people. A whole new access entered into God's people. So when he resurrected, uh, Chad, if you're going to be able to uh, go before me, uh, he resurrected, he began to rise uh, and break the headship of Satan's dominion here in the earth. He broke that headship. Now, that headship was broken, and then he gave gifts to mankind so that mankind from territory to territory to territory throughout the earth, because he had already been prophesied that he would have a house of prayer, a joyful house of prayer. Now look at somebody and say it's the joy part we're working on. A joyful house of prayer in every ethnos people. It would be offered to him. But when he gave these gifts to mankind, he said, you'll have to enforce what I have done for you. So see, it's not like it was just done, we don't have to do anything. That's why a lot of people don't understand. They look around, they see all this evil going on. They say, why is this happening? The Lord's already done all this. It's because we have to activate certain things in the earth realm to enforce this headship that has no more rule. Now that's what's so important. And see, God himself created this law of redemption and law of restoration. It's just like gravity. If I get too close to the edge, gravity's going to start working. But there are laws of redemption and laws of restoration that we have the ability to operate in. And when he bought back mankind, it gave us the ability, the ability to operate in redeeming the time. In other words, no matter what you've lost, you have the ability to bring that back into a new order. Now remember that. Now, he's activated this law of restoration. And remember, uh, here was the issue uh, about that was prophesied because you're always looking for the Lord's key prophetic word. And I think that's what meetings like this always remind me of. He activated this law of restoration, and then when David set up the tabernacle, and placed the ark in it, it was a whole new model. It was different than the legal model of Moses. But then later on, the prophet Amos said that it would be that tabernacle, that tent that would be restored in days ahead. That the tabernacle of David would be rebuilt. And then in the early church, when they're having all this confusion about how they're going to move forward, all of a sudden you hear one thing, a prophecy that says the tabernacle of David will be restored. Now you look that word up in the Greek and you look at the definition of it, it means that as David's tabernacle is being restored and built for the future, it means things will start turning upside down. Turn and look at somebody and say, things are turning upside down. Things are turning upside down because we're having gatherings like this. And the tabernacle of David is being restored for this generation today in this nation. And it's causing things to turn totally upside down so they're coming into God's order again. It's amazing to see it happen. These are days of restoration. Nobody sings it better than Paul Wilbur. What does that mean to us? That means there's this call to covenant that we've lost. A call to Israel. Because Israel is God's nation. 
It's a call to the land that he set aside. But it's not just a call to that land because we're called to that land. It gives us a call wherever we are with the glory, carrying the glory, that wherever we walk, our land will start experiencing the glory of God. See, that was the restoration of David's tabernacle. Gentiles would come in. There would be access for mankind to come back into our redemptive place. And it's not just that. See, Israel was just not a nation that God set boundaries and chose. It was the only nation God gave Torah. The only nation. He didn't give Torah to anybody else. So the only way you can get Torah is through the God of Israel, through his son, and being grafted in. So Torah, the teachings of the Lord, oh, new covenant, can be part of our life. And right now there is something going on with the word coming alive in a way that it's never come alive in decades in this nation. There's this call of restoration and demonstration of the government of God. See, the more we demonstrate God's order and government, the more we see government change. We're God's peculiar people. We're a nation above all nations. We're the nation that is very peculiar, that doesn't allow the nation we live in to rule. We rule from heavenly places. Look at somebody and say, I know he's talking about how peculiar you are. But part of restoration is timing. See, faith works in time and space. Acts 17 says he predetermined both the time and the place we were to be. And when we're at the right place at the right time, this is what those words mean. It means all of a sudden the horizon line for your life takes a shift. Now, you two, God brought you sovereignly here, chose you, brought you here to get you in the right place at the right time so your horizon line would shift and you could see beyond what you've ever seen before. See, that's the beauty of us being in time. God's not in time. We're in time. And so in restoring God's timing, he had this thing called Rosh Kadesh, First fruits. It was a fest, the festive celebrations we're very aware of, but most of us are not aware of the importance of meeting at the new moon first with the Lord. I mean, it's probably the thing that people will say, what is the key to your life and the revelation you have? And I always say, God revealed when I was 18, first fruits to me. See, it wasn't something that I studied to get. He came down and he brought a revelation of the power of first fruits. Now, I had to learn all of the blessings of first fruit, I had to learn the dynamic of first fruit. And then, of course, there's Shabbat. Look at somebody and say, Shabbat Shalom. That's where you break the cycle of your week. There's no law about it. It's just that God made it a point to demonstrate to us that after working all week long, you need to break the cycle that you've been in so you will be renewed and refreshed so you can start your next cycle. And if we don't do that at Shabbat, we lose the concept of this. I can't be legalistic about Shabbat because I'm usually ministering on first fruits or on Shabbat. 
So I have to say, Lord, what day is it that you've set aside in a seven cycle for me to step back and break the power of the old cycle? Do you know that's why we are arguing over health care? Because Isaiah 58 says if we'll do that, we'll live in hell. Our health will spring forth. See, it's so much about God that we don't always enter in. And then another thing about restoration is the procession of God's glory. Now, I know of no ministry that brings in the procession of the glory of God any greater than Wilbur Ministries. Let's thank God one more time for that. So it is always such an honor for me to be with them. Now, I always look at what the year looks like in picture. When you look at uh, the year from a Hebraic standpoint, it's a whole language you can see better. It, prophets have to understand symbols. Prophets have to move in what uh, God shows them visually. It's one of the forms of, there's six different types of prophets, and I'm not here to share on that, but one of them is seer. Therefore, they've got to understand seeing, what they're seeing, because they can look at something and all of a sudden it illuminates, and they have to know why it illuminates. And so this is a very peculiar year, three sevens aligned. Now, you know what that really means when three sevens line up. Cha-ching, jackpot is here. Now, I come from a long line of gambling people that I've had to redeem. So when three sevens, and that will never happen again in our history. So when these three sevens are aligned this year, there is a supernatural thing going on we've never seen before. Seventy is, see, in our calendar, we, we're still in seven, but it's not quite the same because we're 17. Seventeen means victory. Ten means testimony. And we're in seven. But when you look at it from 70, 70 means we're in a decade of breaking the captivity over the last 70 years. That means bloodlines are changing. That means ground is changing. It means structures are changing. And then seven, it, a lot of people think seven is new beginning. Seven is not new beginning. Seven means we're finishing and things that have been working up to now are starting to manifest. Tell somebody you hadn't seen nothing yet. It's amazing. So I want to say to you, welcome to First Fruits, IR 5777. We will never be here again in history, all of us. And this month, why it's so special is the month linked with Issachar. Now, if I'm known throughout around, I'm known for lots of things, but if I'm known for what I really do and what I really am, I'm an Issachar prophet. That means that was the tribe. See, every month is linked with a tribe. And in the midst of this tribe this month, Judah couldn't go first to war without Issachar. Issachar was the Torah tribe. They were the tribe who so understood the word, they could use it to tell time. They could use it to align things, just like Paul was saying to us. And so that tribe was your intercessory tribe who knew how to take the word of God and say now. Now I am here on this Issachar first fruit. 
in Florida, which I believe is very important. I haven't been able to be here on one of these first fruit gatherings in a couple of years. I believe I am here. When Dutch Sheets and I went to this state on the 50-state tour uh, over 10 years ago, we said this was our first fruit state in America. It was not the first state in America. That would be Delaware. But it was a first fruit state, and America would shift if Florida entered in and became the first fruit state that it was called to be. The only way you can do that is restore the tabernacle of David on first fruit in this state. Let's thank God one more time for this ministry. Now, this is what makes it so special. You heard Paul say, I flew here from the White House. Something happened that was so key that had never happened in the White House in America. That, and it was, it was one of those sovereign things where God brought a hundred leaders in, senators. He brought rabbis in, and he brought some key leaders in America that are known for supporting Israel. We were invited by the vice president to do something that had never been done in history since 1948 on the day that Israel started in, celebrated its 69th year as a nation again and started into its 70th year. The White House itself decreed and blessed Israel that had never happened publicly in our White House. The ambassador to Israel, the ambassador from Israel, Vice President Pence, Orrin Hatch, other key leaders said, this nation unequivocally, as long as we have breath and are in here, will stand and protect and secure God's will over Israel. That is worth us shouting the shout of victory. Now think about that. The very first administration to ever do that. It makes you know why there's such a turning upside down going on. Because all of a sudden that realigns us. It realigns nation back to the God of Israel. It assures us to come in to God's plan. And so tonight, I, there's one thing I want to do as we move forward. We've thanked him for that, but I believe tonight we have gathered here to celebrate and say a new cycle has begun in the United States. And so because of that, I felt like tonight the Lord had chosen me to be here with you in Florida and with you as we worship to say we're here to make a new cycle start moving. And so this is more of, again, a historical week and a historical moment that we're in, and I think we're receiving the blessings. Now, this is what it looks like. Every first fruit celebration will always give you keys for future victory. What would happen is they would gather on first fruit as God's people, and that's where they received the prophetic revelation that would help them advance into their season. Now, I've been doing this, and I don't know how to explain it to you since I was 18 years old. Now, how did God do that in my life? Our family had great potential. I've written books on them. I've got, actually, I've got several books back there. I've got one on redeeming time. I've got one on time to defeat the devil. And then the newest book I have is called A Time to Triumph. 
that takes us through 2026. You can have any three books for $25. That will get you a book and a half free because you'll want to get what God is doing in your life and move forward. My whole life has been about redeeming loss. And in the midst of it, being faithful to the Lord in watching him redeem a bloodline. Now, I am here to stand before you tonight to say your blood can be redeemed. What your family was intent to be can manifest in you. Because we had great potential. My dad had acquired all the land of the, the 12 brothers and sisters of his family. It was called Rehoboth. Incredible piece of land. Hundreds of acres. Worked hard. He was a very gifted man. And in the midst of it, in acquiring that, some way or another, without the proper foundation and alignment, the enemy got into that inheritance. Corruption came. All sorts of things came, ha came into our life, and he died a premature death when he was 39 years old. And I ended up being the first son that was now responsible for all this. You don't want to be responsible for all of that when you're 18. It's really not what's on your agenda of life. And so I went away into, for a short while, I loved, I had it met the Lord. I had a godly inheritance. I had an evil inheritance in our family. And I mostly chose the godly. But I'd pulled away out of hurt, and, and it was one of those territorial displays of what had happened. Everybody, it was in all the papers, things that went on, and I, I really had just gone through some things, and I ended up under oxygen in the hospital room. I'd gone over to see my grandmother the week before, and, and she said, you're moving away. You're following in the same path I saw your dad follow in. And I refuse to allow you to do that because God's got a call on you. And I said, I didn't come over here for that. You know, when you're 18, you know more than Jesus. You know more than everybody. She brought, and she was really who had been most influential in my life. And she brought a plate of food in front of me, sat down, turned around with the back of her hand and knocked me out of the chair. And she said, well, I won't say anything else. I'll just let the Lord deal with you. Well, two months after that, I ended up under oxygen in the hospital. And, of course, she was a nurse in that hospital. And she came in and said, I told you this was going to happen. <laughs> but God, everybody say, but God. He put me in this room with a Pentecostal pastor. That's how he works. And he introduced me to somebody I didn't know named Holy Spirit. See, I had met Jesus. I would actually met Jesus, but I had no Holy Spirit. And while I was in that room, he told me something. He prayed with me. He told me, he said, if you'll read a Proverbs and a Psalm, a couple of chapters in the Old Testament, a couple of chapters in the New Testament, you'll be okay. And allow Holy Spirit to do a work in you. Well, he got out of the hospital. I remained there, and the Spirit of God visited me. And on September the 3rd, 1972, I was doing what he told me to do. I was reading Proverbs chapter 3, and it got to this portion. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Well, when you're under oxygen, that sort of starts speaking to you. Because the Holy Spirit all of a sudden had quickened me. And then it goes on and it says this. Honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of your increase, and your barns will be filled with plenty. 
and your vats will overflow. All of a sudden, God came down and visited me. He said, I can restore all your losses. You have one condition. Honor me with your first fruit. Well, I said, Lord, you're going to have to teach me what that is. You're going to have to show me what it is. It wasn't tithing. But I knew it was about giving. And I knew it was about giving eventually and very soon. He started showing me it was about giving the best I had to him each month. He even showed me I don't look at what you keep. I look at what you give. And I knew that there was a principle all through the word. And as I read Genesis, I saw those 12 tribes, 12 sections of land, and saw all their promises and saw all their messes. And I said, now, Lord, if you can promise all this to them with all their problems, you can do this in my family. And I can honestly stand here and say I have never backed up from September the 3rd, 1972. And first fruits has become a way of life for me. I think it restored my body because I had physical issues for years after that. I think by obeying, my body was restored. I watched all my family members come back to the Lord. I watched an entire family be restored. And then I feel like it's why the Lord has allowed me to do and go the places I go and to be with God's people because the love he has for us to bring us into that place where we honor him first is just incredible. I can't explain to you the love the Lord began to reveal to me. Six years later, I was driving. I was working downtown for the oil companies on a special project in Houston. I was driving down there, and all of a sudden, the heavens opened. And the Lord said, do you see all the blessings? I was reading the book of Ephesians, but it fell in my car in reality. He said, do you see all of that? All those blessings that your great-grandfather could have had, your grandfather could have had, your dad could have had. You can have those. They're still there. All the blessings in spiritual places all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And then all of a sudden this love so overpowered me, I couldn't drive. I had to pull aside and just sit there. I mean, it was so, it was intoxicating. It was so incredible. And I said, Lord, what have I done to deserve this love? And he said, that's how much I loved your dad. See, we don't see God the way God is. And he said, I can pour this out and all the love that has been stored up and rejected, you can have it all. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. I think when I look at our nation, I think we have forgotten just three simple words. God is love. And he is turning us upside down until we see him. It's a great war. The war will intensify over the next, this year, the next 10 months. I, I gave a word uh, and left the word at the White House. It will intensify the next 10 months. But God, everybody say, but God. He's restoring us back to where he's first. Now, in the midst of that, here's a better way. Of looking Now, you've got to remember, one of the most important things we can do is get in his timing. See, tonight, 
We've come in here in Florida to worship, no matter what you've gone through in past seasons. All of a sudden, he's reordering your time. He's setting your feet. There's an actual anointing here in this gathering to set your course in action in a new way. So that things he has said and done start manifesting in your life. Now, in the midst of that, let's look at this. Because all of a sudden, first fruits, it's a revelation about his blessing. It's it's a revelation about receiving keys to prosper. Nothing wrong with that word. Doesn't mean we'll all be millionaires. Some of us need to be. But it does mean that whatever he is destined for you to do, that you need to do, he can unlock it for you to do it. And then, this year is different. Things that you know should have happened. All of a sudden, because you're at the right place at the right time tonight, he can unlock those things and they can start happening. It's amazing. You give him your first and your best. And that's just not money. That's in time. Setting aside a time at the first of each month, to worship corporately with his body changes the course of an entire land. I remember when God showed me on May 31st, 2008, Florida from heaven. He showed me this, that it hung in the balance as a covenant state, and there was this black highway that looked like a snake running up through the middle. And he said, Florida can change. He, he had caught me seven years ahead, which was last year. And he said, Florida can change. And that black snake that can affect this whole nation can become a glory road that changes the course of this nation. I believe last year, because you have been doing these first fruit gatherings and because of the faithfulness of God's people here in Florida, the glory road is now flowing through Florida. Go ahead, Chad. Now, you sanctify your your time and your money when you pull aside like this. See, it doesn't matter where your money is coming from. You have the ability to present it to the Lord. A lot of people get so religious and all that. He gave us an avenue to bring any amount we have, lay it before him, the first portion of it, then he'll bless the whole lump of it. And when you lay it there, all of a sudden things start happening. Same way with your time. Tonight, things start happening in Florida in a new way. Things start moving forward. Now, this is really what it looks like. This year, there's this amazing sword from heaven. See, seven is linked. Zion means sword. And this year, in the decade of seeing, watching angels, Ion, God watching us, this sword is coming down this year to begin to open up the way for our future to cause things that have grabbed hold of the things that needed to be manifesting, to cut them loose. But it's not just a sword. It's a sword with a crown. So there's supernatural favor resting on God's people this year. And earth and heaven are realigning. Heaven is shifting, not just earth. And all of a sudden, because heaven's shifting and this revelation and word that's been stored up there is coming down into the earth realm, earth shifting. The government of heaven is realigning. You say the government of heaven. He is Lord Sabaoth, the Lord of the host of heaven, the Lord of the armies of the earth. They're realigning right now. And all of a sudden, when Paul was, there was a point in worship when he said, I'm undone, the, the presence was so strong in here. All of a sudden, this angelic host came down into this room with us, and he said, I am here to release freedom. 
Now hear what I'm saying to you. Because we're doing certain things in God's timing, all of a sudden there's a supernatural alignment going on. Every one of us here tonight, before we leave, will have an impartation of freedom. That thing you need to be cut loose so you can see finished and moving forward. The army of God's mobilizing worldwide. When you travel worldwide, you see it worldwide. Several other things are happening. Number one, there's war that is now stirring. In Revelation, it's, it, it shows, which is the tabernacle of David, and we're in it, we're moving into the reality of it. All of a sudden, you're seeing, all of a sudden, the enemy be pushed down. See, if the heavens are changing, that which has been ruling us is get, it's getting pushed out of the heavens. So we're being able to come face to face with our enemy. And I really believe that the greatest war right now is a war of worship. How will we gather and worship? How will we unlock the revelation to speak into the atmosphere because when you speak revelation his name is knit inside of you when he was knitting you together and the, the word name is shaman when you speak all of a sudden the atmosphere has to take on his character it's amazing to see what's happening there's this war over our alignments and how we're aligned Paul said that today all of a sudden, there's this incredible war over connection and alignment. There's war in the world going on. You cannot get messed up every morning just turning on the news. And how many, uh, it, uh, some people can just go ballistic, turning on the news, seeing all of the conflicts going on worldwide, where you have to see how God is using the conflict and using the influence of his people to set us in a new order. Some of you are going to say one word in the grocery store and start a whole chain of events that began to happen all over a region. It's amazing if you become aware that this is a year we're being cut loose in being in the world, but not of the world. You don't fear the world. The Lord didn't fear the world. That's how you got in his wineskin. He went into the world. He went into Jerusalem, where the only way you could get in John's wineskin was come out of Jerusalem to the desert. He had a new baptism. And there's a new baptism going on right now. And then there's this incredible war over wealth and provision. It's a new war right now. And the way you break open your future is by us doing what we're doing tonight. See, it's amazing what goes on. And remember the early church. I believe, uh, Pastor Paul, that's a picture of a region. He would come down, and he found the seven key churches in a region. They were all important. And he told them, this is what you're doing well. That was the first thing. He didn't tell them how bad they were to start with. That's usually what we do. He said, this is what you're doing well. Then he said, and this is what some of you are going to have to change. There were two churches who weren't doing anything wrong. Not every church is doing something they shouldn't be doing. But every one of them, he said, you're going to have to hear what the Spirit, and I love what the Living Bible says, the wind words of the Spirit blowing into the congregational gathering that will change and cause you to overcome. Now, I took groups to every one of those places where he spoke that where he revealed that to John the Revelator. Not a one of them exists. There's maybe 2,200 Christians in all of Turkey. 
Now think about that. So it says to us, we have an opportunity right now to receive this win. We just sang it. To receive this win that's blowing in. For the White House to say, this year, on the anniversary when Israel became a nation, we will publicly honor God's choice of land. Something has shifted. It's amazing. So this is what I want to leave with you tonight. There's this incredible, incredible time that we're living in. The war is over each one of our destiny. This isn't some big thing. He's interested in how you cut through right now. He brought you here tonight because there's a war over our destiny. He brought me here tonight because he knew at this first fruits, let me just take you on my path. I have worshiped and given in first fruits in Alabama, in England, and flew back in time to worship with my own family and congregation. First fruits in Corinth, then first fruits in the White House, and now first fruits in Florida. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. All of a sudden, God is ordering our steps to say, I've got a path of my glory that I'm creating. And I'm here to announce to you here in Florida, you are key to cause that path in America to come alive in a way like never before. The Lord has chosen the destiny of this people and this state. And all of a sudden, it's coming alive in some new way because you keep worshiping in his perfect timing. See, first fruits restores the power of the first. And what it will do, what it does in each one of us is because you are a work in progress. Look at somebody and say, he's talking about you again. All of a sudden... He's redeeming time. Things that got out of order in your life, losses you experienced, all of a sudden, he's removing the trauma and setting that back in order. He's bringing you here tonight to break off the trauma. He's bringing you here tonight to unlock something in you that's never been unlocked before. So you can move forward. Thanks, Chad, for helping me. He's bringing you here tonight to make a new cycle. Everybody say, we're here to make a new cycle. And actually, that was the word he gave me. He said two two things to me when we flew in here. He said, you are here tonight to make sure that it is spoken over my people in Florida on this first fruits that they will make a new cycle in this nation. And all of those there, I will start making a new cycle in their life. The second thing he said, Paul, and I I don't understand this, is that I saw the water and the assignment in the Jacksonville area against the water. There is an assignment from hell in the mid-heavens that wants to pollute this water and unlock pollution in this area that is beyond anything that we have seen in all of Florida. And the Lord says, tonight I'm going to shift that atmosphere. He wants some sort of contamination to come in here, and the Lord says, I'm shifting it. So when you hear about it approaching, you'll know it's already shifted. And then something else that you see, let's end by turning to two passages. One in Psalm, verse 23. 
See, we all think this is a shepherd psalm. It's actually where God reveals himself as Jehovah Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd. And I will cause you not to want. I will break every circle of lack that's going on in you. See, it's amazing what this psalm really is about. It's about looking and saying, in the midst of your distress, in the midst of your affliction, in the midst of your loss, I'm going to start a new cycle. When you, when you decode the psalm in Hebrew, it's talking about, I will lead you on the path, the agal of God. I will cause the cycle in your life that's been interrupted wrongly to be restored and set in a new order. Look at somebody and say, you're making a new cycle. I will bring you back into a cycle of righteousness because the enemy has interrupted your cycle and made you weak to stand. I will make you so strong in this cycle that you will start celebrating me at the right timing. This is linked with Rosh Kadesh and the feast. You will chug with me. And you will celebrate with me at the right time. And in that celebration, every time you do it, I'll start restoring the full cycle of your life and blood. It's an amazing passage. I will so restore it that I will lead you up to where your enemy defeated you and he'll have to feed you in the future. <laughs> Expect things that the enemy took in other seasons to start coming back supernaturally in new ways. See, one of the things I've had to do is things to redeem my past because, see, you don't go back in your past. The Lord brings your past and sets it in front of you because you're on this circle of life. He knows I'm seeking him for my life and bloodline. He will set everything that's ever been wrong in the past right in front of me and said, you have the authority to put your foot on it. And I have had to do things that he has told me to do to restore that cycle of life in our bloodline where it got interrupted, that it's hard for me to even share some of the things he has made me do because the body doesn't think in redemptive structures in our thought processes. Things my dad lost, he sent me back and said, You'll go in there, and not only will the enemy give it back twice, he'll give it back four times or seven times to you, and then when you get it, you'll multiply it a hundredfold. Now, hear what I'm saying to you tonight. Something has happened from the very ruling government of our nation to say what Israel represents now this nation is realigned. That means the God of Israel all of a sudden had access to come into our nation again. And I think it's, I think it's wild that he chose this place for me to have the first time to come and share it. And that says you get it first. Florida gets it first. One of the people I was with was with a key leader from Florida there. It's amazing how God orders our path. Yours 
you're going to start walking into this finishing anointing and into a new cycle. Your eyes are going to open to God working around you and the Spirit of God moving around you in a peculiar way. You're going to start seeing him in a new way. And then turn with me to John chapter 5. Just to refresh you how the Lord, all of a sudden, I'm reading the, all the books of John right now. And including the book of Revelation all the way through. Because in John chapter 5, something happens all of a sudden, Jesus decides to interrupt Peter's work life. See, this is what I'm trying to say to us. Something has happened this week where there's a divine interruption. And in this interruption of Peter's work life, all of a sudden, while he is weary and out working to try to get his net ready to go back out again, the Lord just takes his boat over. And then the Lord's doing fine in Peter's eyes. He's doing what the Lord's supposed to do that Peter thinks he's capable of doing, teaching. He's a rabbi. And then all of a sudden, the Lord looks at him and says, I'm through teaching, launch out into the deep. Peter said, you don't, because you're who you are, I'll do this. But you really don't know anything about this. You don't know that we've been working this cycle all night long. And we're weary, weary but we'll do it. And he gets out there, and he's, they start doing the same thing in their old cycle. Now, when you leave here tonight, you're going to have to choose to do something different. The Lord will put his finger on it for you. And the Lord says, cast your net to the other side. And all of a sudden prosperity begins to come in. Peter sees a side of who he thinks Messiah is that he didn't even know. All of a sudden, he strips off his old garment. Now, that's key. You're going to have to take off an old identity. And in the midst of it, he falls and he repents. That means he changes his mind. Not because he's done something wrong. And this is all the church thinks sometimes. If we've done something wrong, we'll repent. He repented because of the goodness of God. He saw how good God was in forming this new cycle. Now, Peter is about as up and down as anybody you can read about. Tell somebody, if God can do what he did in Peter, you're a piece of cake for him. Three years later, after he's watched the Lord crucified, after he's denied him three times, after he walked with him, after he had a revelation of him, all of a sudden he's back out in this old cycle again. See, that's what happens when we go through trauma. We've got to find something that is comforting that we know. So he's back out in this old cycle again over in John 21. And they're back fishing and they're not doing very well. And all of a sudden, the Lord shows up. But this time the Lord says something different. He says, Peter, but because he had so shifted three years prior, 
This time he knew it was the Lord. He said, Peter, cast your net over to the right side. Now what that means is you're going to have to move from the order that you're used to into a whole new order. And if you'll do that right now, you'll break into a dimension you've never been in before. Big difference between the left side of the brain, part of my training is in a field called cognitive systems, the left side of the brain versus the functioning of the right side of the brain. Put your hand on your left side and say you you got some things you're going to have to let go of. Now put your hand on your right side. See, both sides are supposed to be working. You are aware of that. We're dominant usually in one side, and the other side just lays dormant. Put your hand on your right side and say, wake up. Be creative. Break out of your linear way. And. Make a new cycle. I am here to announce in Florida, at this first fruit tonight, that God has started a new cycle in this nation. And the first people he has sent me to, to decree that new cycle over, is are those restoring the tabernacle of David in the state of Florida. A new cycle is beginning. Let's stand up. All of a sudden, we're at the right place at the right time. I'm going to ask Paul if he'll come back up with me and the team. The anointing tonight is you have the opportunity because of this first fruit gathering to come into a new timing. Now just raise your hands for a moment. Just say out loud, Lord, redeem my time. Words that have been spoken. Lord, I ask you right now, words that have been spoken in the past over these people and over those that are listening on the web right now and everywhere this tape will go, I say right now, you're causing those words to cycle back around and to come into a new place. The trauma that you've been through tonight, sister, the Lord said, you saw how I knew exactly where you were to bring you here tonight to make a new cycle. He already knew the message he had for you. He knew the loss you had gone through. And he said, tonight you start a new cycle. And things you never saw manifest in those things you lost, you'll see them manifest in other things. Father, you're resetting the course. I'm just looking out here. It's like I see golden movement above so many of your heads. The Lord says, I... I'm setting a whole new course in place for you. I'm causing a will that's not been able to turn to start turning on your behalf. I'm moving you in to my time. Lord, I loose that Issachar anointing over this people. I say, Lord, they'll be at the right place at the right time. And not only will they make a new cycle, 
they will enter into a new blessing realm. They'll enter into a new favor realm. Just feel it. It's like I see it. It's going like this, rolling over you. The freedom they lost, you sent an angelic host to say, I'm starting a new cycle of freedom over you. Freedom means you lift your hands and you're able to shake them free of the past so you can grab a hold to your future. That's what the word means in Hebrew. Things that we couldn't grab hold of in the past, we're reaching up and grabbing hold of now. Lord, we say right now, Jacksonville, Florida, will have a divine visitation of rolling glory. We decree when the enemy comes in to try to poison the waters and tries to create calamity that would create a poison in the waters, we say right now that will be stopped and thwarted. Father, we wave before you. See, at first fruits, every time you wave at first fruits, you know there's a greater in gathering that will come. That's what first fruits. You bring your best this month, and then all of a sudden, it, there's no rules on it. You bring the best that you want to present to the Lord. And all of a sudden, at that first fruit, when you're presenting it to him, all you know there's a greater, there's a final end gathering that's coming in on your behalf. There's a finishing anointing. Lord, I loose that finishing anointing now over us. I decree right now that we have entered in to this time that you have destined and tonight we make a new cycle and we say it begins now in this nation let's give a shout and thank God for what he's doing now I'm going to ask Paul to come up before he leads us I brought something every place the Lord told me to go this year. He had us make these. We had them made in China, representing this year, because China's moving. Now, in that book of mine, you'll see that America, our nation will change. It'll come into a new order. But China's going to have an awakening for a moment that really affects Jerusalem. So like I said, you know, Peter had to put on a new mantle. And I think we have to put on the mantle for this season. And the mantle the Lord had us make was what represents this year. It's the mantle of the sword. And it says the manifold wisdom of God will defeat the enemies in days ahead. Lord, we say a new identity is coming on this ministry. It's going to be able to cut loose things that have never been cut loose from nation to nation to nation. It's going to come into cutting loose one new man so he begins to worship in a whole new way. Lord, it's going to be used in a way, and we say the provision for its future is now being cut loose. The manifold wisdom of God is Joseph's coat worn today. It is that colorful coat that the enemy doesn't know what to do with. Look at somebody and say, we're receiving a new mantle that will dethrone our enemies. Now, Lord, we bless this ministry as it goes forward. Let's give a shout.
As we were waving our hands, I was waving this provision over you. That there's a a new cycle of provision that has been released tonight. Now, for some, it's finances. For some, it's a provision of a whole new cycle of thinking. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And for some of us, the wrong cycle of thinking has been the thing that has limited us from going into that glorious future that God has provided and has held out. Father, I thank you tonight that cycles, patterns of wrong thinking are broken over us tonight. You said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. But that was in the past. And now you've said, I give you the mind of Messiah. So that like Yeshua, in John chapter 5, we can now hear what you say and say what you say. We can see with new eyes and do what you do. And Lord, we declare tonight that we are moving into this. We will not be denied. We will not be denied. We receive this new pattern of walking, of speaking, of thinking, of provision, this new first fruits way of being. Lord, we, we repent of the old stuff. And we believe and receive what you have said to us. Lord, I pray that you'll give us discernment. And even while we sleep tonight, words that words that went in one ear and out the other are, are, were, we, are we, uh, our attention was distracted for a moment and we missed something. Holy Spirit, I know that you are great enough to capture those and and speak them to us even while we sleep. Sing them over us. Enlighten our hearts and minds that from this moment we are a different people. We've always been peculiar, but may we be fashioned by the the word that you've spoken to us tonight. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe. You bring forth bread out of the land. The land Haaretz, not the earth, as many quote it, Haaretz, the land. You brought bread for us out of the land. Jesus himself was born in the city called the House of Bread. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagam. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. And it crushed, it pleased the Lord to crush him and cause him to suffer, that our cup would be full. 
And Lord, we celebrate you too. I wish there was a way to, to share. Well, I'm just, I'm going to put this down here. Could be dangerous, but there it is. There, there are some of you that there is, there is provision in that loaf right there. <clears throat> don't tell me what time it is. I don't care. Glad you don't. A time to triumph. How to win the war ahead. Well, the war is already here. It would be really good to know how to win it. <laughs> um, Chuck doesn't write things to sell books. He, he writes to, to help us win. Uh, in what God has shown him. And um, this new book is back there on the table as well. And uh, thank you, Chuck, for pitching this one. This was number one on Amazon last week for some strange reason. But you, you need to have Chuck's book as as well <clears throat> oh my goodness these are hard to these are hard to end first Friday is our family to yours we we don't hold these celebrations uh, for any other reason except that the Lord has spoken to us for many years. We, we take the best of what we have and we scatter it all over the earth. And the Lord has spoken to us about make sure that we share the best of what we have here in our own community. And that's what First Friday is all about. Our family to yours bringing voices into our community that you normally won't hear um, from church to church. And, and there are other voices that are on their way this year. So please make sure you keep an eye on your inbox. And when we send you these email reminders, it's simply that. We're not bugging you for anything. We just want to remind you that it's another opportunity for us to be who God has called us to be, a first fruits people, as we gather on the first Friday of every month. And we've already looked at our calendar, and we're not taking a break in the summer. We'll, we'll have meetings in June, July, August, through the year, because we believe that this is such a critical time that the Lord will continue to instruct us and show us what we need to do, who he wants us to be. Um, I would like to receive a special love offering for our friend, um, Chuck Pierce. Ushers, would you, would you help us with that? Go ahead and have a seat if you need to for just a moment. I really feel honored that we are the first spot on the first coast. We're a first people that um, in his busy schedule that Chuck would honor us with a visit here. You know that black snake that he mentioned? Some of you were here at that meeting um, Pastor Paul Zink and, and Sharon Zink are sitting next to me here on the front row uh, where he spoke that word about that 
black snake. That very afternoon before he released that word, a big black snake came and visited us in our yard. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I can still hear my wife scream. And then that word about that black snake and what would be required of us to cleanse that pattern. It's so good to hear uh, tonight that a new road of glory is being released in Florida. If you'd like to make out a check tonight, make it out to Wilbur Ministries. We'll make sure that every shekel gets to Chuck in his ministry. We want to encourage him. You know, when, when we were doing, a couple of years ago at New Life, we were doing conferences called Days of Elijah. And I think at two of them, Chuck Pierce was a special guest of ours and speaker. And, and when the offering was received and, and we'd count up the offering, um, it, it amazed me that Chuck Pierce's personal check was the largest check in the offering every time. Every time. A generous man is sowing for his own good future. I want to encourage you to be generous, to say thank you to Chuck, but also to say thank you to the Lord. And by this, you can also say, I'm, I'm putting my money where my faith is. I'm receiving the word. You know, when you receive a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. What is his reward? It's the word that he spoke. That if you'll receive it, it will profit, it will prosper in your life. If you like what you heard, you might want to agree with that and solidify it. Put your money where you're... I don't know how else to say it. We had some announcements for you. Um, are there any that are critical that we need to hear before we go, Nathan? Pastor Dennis, any, any announcements we need to hear before that are critical for us? We would love for you to serve with us at First Friday. There is a host of volunteers that help with this every month and do such a great job in the parking lot. Listen, you, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to serve. We need help in the parking lot. If you are just a friendly face that loves people, we'd love to have you greet. We'd like to have people greeted six, seven, eight times before they get in the sanctuary to know you're welcome in this place. We could use help in several different areas. And how could we do that, Pastor Dennis? How did we Where's the connection card? There's a connection card on your seat. You, it, it's a sign. You're sitting on the connection card. And if you'll fill that card out and say, sure, once a month, I'll give, or once every three months, I'll give an hour. That would be awesome. Pastor Dennis is right over here. Wave. He's a big, tall guy with a beautifully pressed, printed white shirt. And if you go to the connection room right outside the door, he'll meet you there, he'll receive your card, and he'll smile back at you, and we would be delighted to have you serve with us at First Friday. Okay, we will be here next month, July, August, September, through the summer, as I said. June 2nd, July 7th, and August 4th, for those of you who are calendar challenged, memorize those dates, 7 p.m., Normally, we're done much earlier, but I'm going to be the last guy in the room to say, Holy Spirit, that's enough. We can't take any more. I'm the last guy in the room to say that. All right. Why don't you stand and join hands with those who are around you, and let me speak this over you. And the Lord said, when you do, 
I will do two things. I will place my name upon the people. And I will bless them. So receive the name of the Lord inscribed on your life. And receive his blessing that makes you fat, makes you rich, and adds no sorrow with it. Yevarechacha Adonai v'yishvaracha. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai panavelecha v'yichudecha. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yisa Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his joy, his righteousness, his health, his strength, his provision, his wisdom and revelation for a victory in this new season. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach Tzidkenu in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, and our righteousness. Amen and amen. God bless you. We have nice refreshments for you out there. We look forward to seeing you next month. Shabbat Shalom. Help me welcome tonight, Mr. Paul Wilbur. Let's lift up the name of the Lord tonight. Let God arise over.